first artists that were the ROI. Correct. So you were there when the ROI was formed. Uh, tell us about the early days of the ROI. Well, you've got to go back into a little bit of Central African history. Uh, I can't remember the exact date, but the federation was formed of what was then Northern Rhodesia, which is now Zambia. No, about it's 56, 57, somewhere in there? I'm not sure. Yeah. You, can, you can pick it up yeah. out of a book. Uh, so Southern Rhodesia, Northern Rhodesia, and Nyasaland were amalgamated into a federation. Mm -hmm. And we then, the, f the federal army as it became, took on the existing regiments, which were two battalions of the King's African Rifles, one battalion of the Northern Rhodesia Regiment. And to balance the racial structure, because it was predominantly black, all the regiments, white officers and white NCO, the Rhodesian African Rifles as well. They decided to get some white units. So the Rhodesian Light Infantry was formed, and that was an all white you know, mm -hmm. um, regiment. The, a squadron of the SAS was formed, and a squadron of armored cars, which, strangely enough, was called the Salu Scouts. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, because it was a reconnaissance. Uh -huh. And uh, the early days of the RLI were. I was a Sergeant Major in the School of Infantry. I've been there for about seven years. And I was chosen to be the first RSM of the RLI. Now what happened was they recruited in England, they recruited in South Africa, and they recruited in, in Rhodesia. So they started off as a training unit in a place called Brady Barracks in Bulawayo, mm -hmm. which was an old Air Force station, a really uh, pretty run down barracks because it had been uh, neglected after the Second World War, pretty much. Uh, so we must have had about a thousand odd guys in, from these different countries running around. The Federal Army made a huge mistake. Uh, we had a huge training depot at the Willem Barracks, but that was for national servicemen. The instructors were all, had been trained, a lot of them by me, in the School of Infantry in Guelo. So each training company was very well established as regards instructors, highly qualified guys. And what they should have done is taken a couple of those companies and allocated the new recruits for the RLI regiment into those companies, put them through their basic recruit courses there. You could have then uh, selected and all the misfits kicked out before they could cause mm -hmm. any, any mischief. You know? But they didn't do that. So we had a thousand odd guys, and, and the, the cry was train yourselves. So we had a few NCOs from the British Army, a couple from the South African Army, and a, a few from the Rhodesian Army, and myself. And we had to get done and start trying to get some order out of that. The reason I'm telling you this, and I'm just uh, sketching over it, was because it took so long to get rid of the rubbish. We got a very bad name in Bulawayo. So much so that they, there was an editorial in the, one of the newspapers requesting that we either get disbanded or jack ourselves up. And it wasn't, it wasn't the fault of the officers and the, the warrant officers and NCOs. A, we didn't have enough of them. And B, a lot of them weren't trained instructors. You know, in the British Army, 
you can be a sergeant or some major but have no idea whatsoever about instruction. It's a, it's a particular um, uh, skill you go to these military schools to learn. Drill instructors, weapons instructors, tactical instructors, signal instructors. You all go to diff on different courses and uh, get yourself jacked up there. And this, unfortunately, we didn't have. But eventually, we, uh, we got over the hump. We got chaps trained. We sent uh, young NCOs to the School of Infantry and gradually built up our own team of instructors. Plus, we sent potential chaps who looked there. They had good uh, uh, NCO potential to our School of Infantry where they uh, went through the different courses. And, and so gradually, we, we uh, started developing into a proper unit. But it was tough going in the beginning. It really was. Uh, How long were you with the RLI? I was with the RLI 13 years. I was commissioned into the RLI. It was very seldom that uh, an other rank, as you know, if you're not an officer, is commissioned, it's very rare that he stays with the, with the battalion. But I, I was commissioned in, in the RLI and I became the initially the training officer for the whole battalion. As I say, it's, it's very seldom that uh, anybody commissioned from the ranks remains in that regiment, but I, I did and initially was the training officer for the battalion. Good of infantry experience I had behind me was, was great. We had our share of characters, but yeah. in the main they were good, solid uh -huh. citizens. It was just a question of training them properly and motivating them properly, and having the right officers and NCOs. Uh, when when operations started. Then, for the first time, the rest of the army saw what the RLI was all about, and they were absolutely magnificent, uh, right through the war. Uh, later, I, I finished my service, my tour, uh, after due for retirement, and I was called back to start another unit called the Slew Scouts. Funny enough, you recall earlier on I mentioned this Armand Car Regiment, which was disbanded when the Federation broke up. And the name was already chosen by Army Headquarters for this new regiment. The RLI, between the RLI and the Slew Scouts, I think that they accounted for most of the terrorists with, uh, that were killed in that, uh, and of course the Air Force, mm -hmm. in that uh, seven years of the uh, Salih Scouts' existence. The war, of course, people forget, went on for about 14 years. It started in about 67. Uh, that was Cauldron and Nickel and those Cold operations. Cauldron was the first big operation the RLI were engaged on and, and that's where they made their mark and opened the eyes of many people who passed disparaging remarks about them. A lot of the officers from the black regiments used to, used to say, well, for the price of that European regiment, we could have two black battalions. But of course it was the quality that uh, counted. And I'm not saying Black soldier didn't, didn't do a good job, he did a f first class job. But that RLI just had something special. They really were a fantastic battle unit. Uh, 